Is Leonidas still a good commander to invest in in 2022? The short answer is hell yeah. In this video, I'm going to talk about why it is that I still very much like this commander and what would need to change to make him a commander that you would not want to invest in. So stick around in this video for my guidance on Leonidas, who I still think is freaking amazing. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Just Cool Gaming, and I have been talking for ages about how strong the Guan Leo pair is. And I'm just going to start up front with the big downside of Leonidas is that pretty much Guan Leo is the only pair I've found for him that really punches at the right strength to be considered one of the main marches you can use for so many things. But great news, it's so good that I am still using it despite having all of these different commanders, despite the fact that CBO recently came out and I'm going to be maxing him. In my starting five commander pairs, Guan Leo is a pair and I've got a separate Scipio pair. And I mention that because if you're bringing only one infantry pair, actually don't invest in Leonidas. Save your sculptures. That should just be Guan and Scipio and that's it. But if you're making more than one infantry pair, then it's a no-brainer to invest in Leonidas. And he's even good at a low number of skills. 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one is still really insane. Now, if you're newer to the game, you're like, okay, uh, I don't really know what's going on here. Tell me a little bit more about this commander and why he's good. He is very, very tanky. And he enhances damage. And he enhances rage generation. And he starts shielding you when you get low. And it's all these things that make Leonidas such a natural pair with the actual, one of the best, commanders in the game, Guan Yu. Now, Guan Yu has all punch and no tankiness, you see? And this is why they're such a good pairing. That is why they work together so well. Also, he has a silence, the rage enhancement there is really, really good with the Leo. So... Should you invest in Leonidas in 2022? Well, are you going to pair him with Guan? And if the answer is, yes, I plan to do that for the foreseeable future, then that is a great investment. If you're thinking, uh, I'm, I'm probably going to switch it up and replace him, then no, don't invest in Leo. That I don't think that's a great choice because I don't think there's a lot of other great places you can use Leo and, and get really good stuff going on. But may maybe there is. Maybe there is. I haven't tested probably as, enough, uh, as much as I should have with various Leo combos because this one combo is just so good. Now, let's talk for a little bit about um, using him at an unmaxed 5-5-1-1. Five, five, one, one. And I've talked in many instances about why he is one of the best 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one commanders in the game. In fact, I think you're better off with Guan with a 5-5-1-1 five, five, one, one Leo than you are with a Guan and Alex. And that's a little bit contentious. But the main reason why that works is that I find, forget what it, what the skills say for a moment, and I'm going to cover that. I find that when I use Guan with Alex, that my march just ends up dead from taking damage, not even direct damage, just area of effect damage. Whereas when I use Guan and Leo, I end up nearly full health by the time an enemy turns to come and fight me. And that is really valuable. And he's also really good when they do turn to fight you. So let me go to my restart account to show you what an unmaxed Leo can do. Okay, this is my restart account. And uh, my commander depth is definitely a different situation. Um, I have a lot of infantry commanders on this account because it is an infantry account. Currently, I use Guan Skippy and then also Alex with CJ. Great way to run those commanders paired together. However, Leonidas is what we're talking about here. The first skill, when maxed, if you're doing a 5-5, five, 1-1, five, one, one, gives you 30% health for three seconds. I cannot emphasize how tanky that makes you. It's so strong. Plus, 600 damage factor, hitting up to three targets. And if your current target is affected by silence or attack reduction, that target takes, it takes, an extra 50% damage. It's not a lot of damage. He's not really here to do a lot of damage. We have plenty of commanders in the game that don't do a lot of damage, but are still really good, like Trajan or Mulan. But let me continue. 300 Spartans, second skill. When you max this, 30% defense, 
15% speed of rage gained. So important for using an active skill just before the enemy. So good. Because if you use them with Guan and you silence the enemy and make it so they don't get the skill cycle before you do, you not only hit them with a bunch of damage, then you silence them. It's so good. At even just one point, the third skill, however, gives you a shield of 600 chance to trigger when you're below 50% of units. This is more important for Canyon, but definitely will be relevant when you're getting wrecked in the open field, and also you get 3% attack with only one point in here. I mean, whatever. The shielding in and of itself is kind of cool if you're getting wrecked. And the last skill with even just one point in it has a 25% chance to give you 5% increased damage for 5 seconds, and that can stack up to 4 times. That doesn't mean that it always will. In fact, sometimes it will fall off. But this damage-enhancing effect here is really good on a commander like Guan Yu. Leo doesn't do all that much damage, but when you put him with Guan Yu, who does a ton of damage but has no survivability, it's a very magical combination. They were released together right after Attila Takeda, and that was another one of those pairs where, like, man, you smash them together, and you're going to use them together, and that's the best place for both those commanders, really, is paired together. So Guan and Leo, hopefully I have convinced you, is a really solid pair, even to run 5-5-1-1. But if you weren't convinced, let me just cut to some footage that I did recently uh, where we were testing Scipio. You'll hear Cortex also on voice where we run a Guan Leo and a Guan Alex up against the same thing. I mean, I think you'll see that the Guan Leo is just tankier. It survives better. Got silenced. Oh, that's bad. Mm -hmm. That was pretty catastrophic silence timing. But I might beat you. Yeah. Oh, what? What's oh. happening? <laughs> that's crazy. I think we cracked the code for one of the better CPO combos. It's right here. It's the Honda, man. Hands down. Yeah. Looks it like really it. is. It really is. Honda with any high skill damage commander is really good. And this just gives a lot of opportunity for that to shine because so much of the fight continues on when Honda is low health, which again, boosts the skill damage when you get low. And upwards of 60%. I mean, GG. People are saying Leo is just bad. Okay, I'll run one Alex into this next. I feel like, bro, these Le the Leo's underrated. I think we have to say it. Yeah. I feel like Leo is really underrated. Um, but he's. I just really also wouldn't Alex. come anywhere other than with Guan. I still almost won the trade somehow on that Leo report, by the way. Did you? you? only won that by 2,000. It's because I have more uh, troops. That's that's a part of the reason I'm winning the fights, though. You won by 1,600, yeah. You can see, Even though, though why like Honda is so popular in Arc League teams. Like, more troops? Like, you don't care about the trade. You just want right. to win fights. No, not a hot tub stream. Cheers, though, Cloud Strife. We crack the code. Everybody's like, all right, I'm getting my CPO. And then it's like, oh, but what you need to do is expertise Honda. <laughs> right. What? <laughs> uh, I still think expertise CPO over expertise Honda in terms of priority. Honda primary? I actually don't even have talents on Honda. But I don't think Go running a chat. primary yes. will be the way to do it. <laughs> so, so I guess this will prove Guan Alex is better than Guan Leo. Well, uh, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, I feel Look like this the trade difference. Do, do you need any more proof that Guan Leo uh, is the way to run the Guan combo? Did you need more proof? We do it again.
So the only downside with Leo, where you're going to think, man, would I replace him in my lineup, is the fact that he has no march speed. So your Guan Leo is going to be slower than other things. And that is one of the advantages of Guan Alex and Guan Skippy, is that they move fast. Even Guan CJ has a lot of march speed. But I find that when it comes to survivability, it's tough to top the Guan Leo. Now, I'm not saying Leo is better than Skippy, not even close, right? Scipio is a much stronger commander overall. Um, and that is why I, I just haven't invested in Leo on this account. I think if I were to take Leo to 5-5-1-1 right now, I could probably improve my murder ball. And what I would have to do is use Guan with Leo. I would use Alex with CJ. I'm using Nevsky and Esong. Just bear with me. And then for my fourth march, instead of doing Trajan Ethel, I do Trajan Skippy. Maybe that's the way I would run that. But like every time I say Skippy, I'm saying Scipio, just so you know. Um, last thing I'll say about Leonidas that makes him somewhat difficult to work on as a commander is that he's a Mightiest Governor commander. And he's only available in Season of Conquest. That's KVK 4 and beyond. So right when you jump into Season of Conquest, KVK is for the very first time. He is not a super high priority. Nevsky, super high priority. Scipio even higher priority in my opinion. A commander like Honda Tadakatsu, really, really good, really, really versatile. Guan Yu, far more important. XY, really strong commander. I mean, the reason, yeah, even William, really strong commander. The reason you go for a Leonidas is because you're looking to expand perhaps the number of marches that you can bring on a low amount of sculptures, and that's where the Guan Liao kicks into play. That's where I would recommend you use him. And that's an approximate pecking order for how, how far down I would put Leonidas on your priority list for just arriving the season of conquest and really wanting to pick the right commanders. I don't think he's up at the top because at the end of the day, you're only going to bring one infantry march. It's Guan Scipio. I personally still elect to bring two. And I think there's plenty of great infantry to make that a solid choice for me right now. That is Skippy with uh, Honda Tadakatsu and then the Guan with the Leo. And my trades are always so good with that combo. I just can't imagine stopping using it. If you enjoyed the video, throw a like on here and consider subscribing. I'm open to your feedback down below in the comments. Let me know what you think. But personally, I mean, even on this account, I'm still looking at Leo going like, should I just bite the bullet and do that? But I'm holding off for new archers for whenever those come into the game. And for this account, I've just got to get Esong paired with something that's an, another committed, dedicated archer commander, you know? Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.